Hello, welcome to Motorboat and Canoeing, part of Virtual Camp. My name is Jamie Alton. I work with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife as a conservation educator here at Camp Earl Wallace. During this video, we're going to be looking at ways in which you're able to earn your virtual camp patch by doing different things with the motorboat and canoes. We're going to start with the motorboats. Our demo motor is a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard motor with a tiller handle for steering. First thing that we're going to discuss is the six safety checks before going out on the water and three pre-start procedures. Our first safety check is gas. You gotta have enough gas to get to where you're going and to get back. The second safety check is connections. We've got a connection here to the motor and connection down here to the tank. You wanna make sure those are secure. Our third safety check is the pump or bulb. This needs to be in good working order before you go out on the water. The fourth safety check is the clamps. The clamps are important. They need to be tight. That way the motor will not fall off into the water. The fifth is the safety chain. The safety chain is a backup in case the clamps do fail. So this needs to be attached to the motor and to the boat as kind of a backup. And the sixth safety check is our keel cord or lanyard. This needs to be attached to your life jacket or around your wrist. That way if you fall out of the boat, it's gonna pull it off the keel switch, kill the motor, and it will stop. Hello, my name is Eric Schulte, and I'm a conservation educator with the Department of Fish and Wildlife, Camp Earl Wallace. And I'm gonna tell you about a few more parts of the boat motor, the three pre-start procedures, things you'll need to know for your worksheet. So the first starting procedure, we've gone over the six safety checks, and now we're ready to start the boat, is you wanna make sure your gear is in neutral. So right here, the gear shifter, you want it to be in line with the N, which stands for neutral. If it's forward toward the F, that means it's in forward gear. If it's backward toward the R, that means it's in reverse. So we want it to be right in the middle, in N, neutral. That means your propeller down here, if it's in neutral, it won't be spinning. So make sure your gear shifter is in neutral. The second pre-start procedure is your throttle. You wanna make sure your throttle handle, right here, it's kinda like a motorcycle handle, that's how you accelerate. You wanna make sure that is all the way down to slow. That would be the starting position. You don't wanna start your boat with it all the way up on fast, it's not good for the motor. So make sure you look at that and have it all the way down. Sometimes it's a turtle for slow, sometimes it says zero, something like that. So make sure that's all the way down on slow. And the last pre-start procedure is you wanna look all the way around your whole entire boat and around down near your propeller to make sure everything is all clear. You wanna make sure there's no other boats in the area, no swimmers around, uh, no driftwood that might get near your propeller and, and chop it up. So you wanna look all the way around in a 360 degree angle, down by your propeller and make sure everything is clear. When it is clear, you wanna shout it out let everybody know so you'll go all clear and that way everybody around you will know that you're getting ready to start your boat now a few other parts of the boat I'd like to tell you about for your worksheet is right here is called the pull cord when you're ready to start your boat this is what you'll pull it's just like your lawnmower so you want to grab it firmly with your hand place a hand on the motor for support and pull it just like you would a lawnmower all the way back and let it in nice and slow. Don't let it go right here or it'll come back and smack your hand. This part right here is called the choke. If when you're going to start your motor, if it's not really wanting to start, what you'll want to do is pull your choke out just like that, then give it a go. It should start to turn over and start the motor there. And once your motor starts and runs for a few seconds, then you can push your choke back in. And the last part for your labeling is all the way down here. If you can see this, that's the propeller. Sometimes people call that the prop. That's what spins to push the boat forward. So it's a sharp piece. So that's why you want to make sure nothing's around there when you start your boat. Uh, also, don't want to be reaching your hand down there or anything like that. So make sure you're all clear of your propeller, also known as a prop. 
As mentioned before, this motor has a tiller handle for steering. So if you want to make a left turn, you're going to push the motor to the right. If you want to make a right turn, you're going to pull the motor to the left. If you want to go straight, keep it straight. Part of earning your virtual camp patch is to label the different parts of the motor with the worksheet provided. Next I'm going to talk about some safety items that you need to have in your boat. One being a life jacket. Life jacket's very important. There needs to be at least one life jacket for everyone that's on board. Next we have a throwable. A throwable is important and a, another safety item that needs to be in a boat as well as a horn. You need to have a horn on board as well. A fire extinguisher is another important safety item to have on board. Just to let you know, there's a boating safety course online. This can be found at boat-ed.com. Just hit the Kentucky link and it'll take you to a lot of information about that. Kentucky law requires boat safety education for operators of a motorized vehicle with over 10 horsepower between the ages of 12 and 17 that are alone. As part of earning your virtual camp patch, participants will need to get your picture taken holding the Kentucky Fishing and Boating Guide or get your picture in front of a computer with the guide pulled up online. All right, now we're gonna talk about the parts of a canoe paddle that you'll need to label on your worksheet. So there are overall five parts of a canoe paddle. The first part is called the grip. It's in the shape of a T. Some people call it the T grip. You can call it the grip or the T grip. You like to hold it with your hand firmly like this. You can also, if you like Star Trek, live long and prosper, make for a real good grip. Next is the shaft. And the shaft is then connected to the blade and where the blade and the shaft meet is where your other hand will go. That's called the throat. And at the very end, it's called the tip. So you have your T-grip, your shaft, your throat, your blade, and your tip. You want to hold it just like so. Now I'm going to pretend that this here is a canoe. Now at home, I know you probably don't have a canoe. You can use a chair or your recliner or a bench or whatever you can come up with. I'm going to kind of pretend like I'm getting in a real canoe so you can get an idea of it. But let's say the paddle is already in the canoe, so the paddle will be down here. And as I approach my canoe, I will want to have one hand on the canoe, one hand on the dock. And I want to squeeze them both together so the canoe doesn't want to float off on me when I try to step in. So I'm squeezing them together, and what I'll do is I'll basically step right into the middle of the canoe. You don't want to step on either side because it might teeter-totter and you might fall out. So step right in the middle, keep your balance. So let's act like I'm stepping in the middle. I keep my balance and I sit down nice and easy, just like that. Now I'm in the canoe. My partner will be sitting up front. So what I do when my partner wants to get in is I will hold the canoe to the dock for my partner and my partner will get in the front. Now we're both in. So we'll reach over, reach down and grab our paddle. We'll hold it like so. So if you're going to paddle on this side, you hold it like this. If you're going to paddle on the other side, you basically just switch hand placements. Boom, boom. Okay, and then you can paddle over here. You don't want to crisscross your arms when you paddle. It's uh, pretty awkward and you won't get very good leverage. So now I'm going to demonstrate the canoe strokes. The first stroke is very basic. It's called the forward stroke. What you do is you'll put the tip and the blade all the way into the water and you will pull straight back. That will cause the water to push that way, which will get your canoe to go forward. So this is called a forward stroke. Put it in the front, pull straight back. Forward stroke. All right, now the next canoe stroke is the exact opposite. It's called the reverse stroke. So you'll put the paddle, the tip and the blade in the water in the back, and you'll push forward. That will get your canoe to go backward. 
So this is called the reverse stroke. Put in the water in the back, push to the front. Reverse stroke. Now the next is called a forward sweep. You'll be making a sweep motion with your blade, almost like you're sweeping the floor underneath your bed. So you'll put it in the front and you make a sweep motion. It's like a C shape, like a half moon toward the back. And what sweep motions are for is to help you turn. You'll coordinate with your partner and each do the appropriate sweep motion and I'll help you turn left or right. So this is the forward sweep, C shape to the back. The opposite of that is called your reverse sweep. So you put the blade in the back, half moon C shape to the front. It's called a reverse sweep. And then the last canoe stroke is called our draw stroke. This is when you're coming back in toward the dock and you're getting ready to get out. So let's say you pull up kind of parallel to the dock and you're a little far away. So the draw stroke is where you'll basically put it straight out into the water and pull it straight toward the canoe. And that will kind of help your canoe go sideways so you can come into port. Now this one you gotta be careful with It'll tend to make you want to lean over, and that can cause your canoe to teeter-totter and you might fall out. So make sure you keep your balance when doing the draw stroke. Stay nice, straight, and upright. Put it in out there and pull it toward you. And that'll basically draw you in or pull you in to the dock. Once you're back to the dock, you can use your T-grip to actually hook on the dock and pull you the rest of the way. Then you hold while your partner safely gets out. Then your partner will help hold the canoe while they're sitting on the dock and then you can climb out. Last but not least, don't forget to hook your canoe back up to the dock with the rope so it doesn't drift off overnight. For your canoe stroke submission, you'll need to use something in place of a canoe paddle. If you already have a canoe paddle, that's great. If not, you can use something like a broom. You'll need something in place of the canoe, a bench, a chair, a recliner, what have you. And you'll need to demonstrate the five canoe strokes on video and you'll upload that video to the internet. For your final recap of what you need to submit for the motor boating and canoeing activity of your virtual camp patch, you'll need to complete the worksheets to label the motor and the canoe paddle. You'll need to get a picture of yourself holding a fishing and boating guide or a picture of yourself with it pulled up on the internet at fw.ky.gov and lastly you need to submit the video of yourself demonstrating the canoe paddle strokes.